Hi, I'm PC. I can be upgraded at any given time, essentially lasting with you forever. Good God, that's terrifying. What's up, folks? I'm Mac. Look, the truth of the matter is, nothing lasts forever, okay? Not me, not any of you, and certainly not this guy. Wow, morbid much? <laughs> Even without some cool M1 chip, I am still the reigning champ of gaming. Oh, I game all the time via Unreal Engine. That's besides the point though. I'm color grading 6K R3D raw footage on a full res timeline in Resolve. I'm sorry, did you say full res? Oh yeah, and that's a fact, Jack. Here, I'll even airdrop you a screen grab of my export speeds. Oh wait, you don't have airdrop. Guess I'll just have to email it. What is up, folks? Today I'm going to take you on a little behind-the-scenes journey documenting my experience working with 6K R3D RAW footage on the new little Mac Mini M1. Ours has 16 gigabytes of RAM with a built-in 500 SSD drive. As you'll see here, I have two HP Dreamcolor monitors set up for a dual display when working within DaVinci Resolve Studio 17. I found this awesome little hub where I was able to turn one of my lightning bolt ports on the back of the Mac Mini M1, you know, the USB-C port, and I was basically able to turn that into an HDMI port. Now check out this little hub, it's pretty cool. You still have your USB-C port, you get a couple USB 3s out of it, you get a headphone jack. The cool part is on the back here, you have a micro SD card slot and a normal sized SD card slot. So I thought that was pretty rad. And if you use this with a laptop, there's even a place to charge with it as well. So you have a lightning bolt charging port. I'm gonna have a link to that down in the description below. It's made by some company called Vava or VAVA, -VA, I don't know, but it's very inexpensive. I got it for less than 40 bucks. Now I'm able to have both my HP Dream Colors and I do like using these within Resolve for color grading. I am coming off of a $1,600 custom built PC. Now we built that a couple years ago to work primarily with 4K raw footage, but to give you an idea on the specs of that, it was a Ryzen 5 six core processor. I had 64 gigabytes of Vengeance Corsair RAM. I had an internal one terabyte NVMe SSD from Intel, as well as another SSD Samsung Evo. It was 256 gigabytes. It was a pretty good uh, little PC, but ever since picking up the red Komodo back in September of last year, uh, I've just been experiencing some problems with that. So in the interim, waiting for something really rad to come out, we just picked up this Mac Mini M1, uh, got it full, the full amount of RAM we could get, which is only 16 gigs. So that did make me a little nervous. And with all, you know, the reviews online are really a mixed bag. I always, always, always have edited and color graded off of an external SSD drive. That's just the way I was taught. It's just the way I always roll. What I normally use is this bad boy right here. Now this is SanDisk Extreme Pro Gen 2, a two terabyte SSD. On paper, that thing uh, has 1,050 megabytes per second transfer speed, so it is super fast. But I also use it on set when offloading the 6K R3D RAW footage, and we can dump a 256 gigabyte CFAS card in about 10 to 12 minutes, so it is super fast. Because if you're using a normal hard drive, it would take you over, like it would take at least 45 minutes, and you would get bottlenecked on set very, very quickly. So another thing regarding this Vava USB hub is that I don't recommend plugging your SSD in that to edit footage or certainly not for color grading footage off of because these little USB ports do bottleneck quite quickly. To compare the speeds of this SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD when it's plugged directly into the USB port on the back of the M1, and then I plugged it into this little uh, USB hub, and here you can see the differences in the speed. So those little hubs, you'll notice it uh, cut that speed in half. So that is something to be aware of for everyone. I do not recommend using those little USB hubs for you know editing off of or dumping footage off of. Um, but the main reason I got it is because I just wanted to be able to take advantage of both of my HP Dream Colors when I'm color grading. So without further ado, just discovered something here. <clears throat> so if we go down here and click this, and you'll notice this is for your camera raw settings. So what I used to do on the PC, I would do half res premium at 16 bit depth. Uh, that's just the way that, that I like to do it. And then we click save, but watch what happens on the, uh, we start getting some, this is just scrubbing it, right? I'm just scrubbing the file. So that's um, a little bit of an issue there. And then if I, however, if I drop this to half res good and go back to 10 bit, 
and now that goes away. So you're not you're not able to do it in 16-bit, just the 10-bit. Now let's see if 10-bit works at half res premium versus half res good. So there we, uh, no, we're still getting a little bit of it there. You can see it happening. That's just scrubbing it, right? So the downside is you won't be able to do 16-bit at half res premium. You can only do 10-bit at half res good in order to you know, get more of that, take advantage of the R3D raw footage without getting that weird glitch thing. Okay, so I've done some pretty extensive grading here. I mean, I can show you just by clicking on and off, you can see where we went, where we were, where we are now, and you can see there's some, I don't know, some would call it heavy duty grading, some would not. So this is a compound node, about six different nodes in one, noise reduction, lifting the gain and bringing down the gamma. This is a window on our girl's face, tracking her for the entire minute and uh, 30, I believe the entire clip is actually, yeah, 139. So the window tracks her for you know a minute and 39 seconds. Uh, and then there's an outside window as well, which is bringing down the offset of the entire scene. And then this is just lowering the saturation a little bit. So there's some, uh, you know, there's, I guess it depends on who you are, um, if you would call that heavy grading or not, but there is windows in, you know, there's two big windows there, definitely a large tracking window and the noise reduction are probably the biggest things. So when we try to play this back and again, uh, I have optimized media on, but no proxies, right? So we're watching this in full res here with the 6K R3D RAW. So I realize it's hard to hear probably on this, but... The audio is definitely, um, you know, struggling. It sounds very distorted. But the image is plain. But, the, but it's, all, it's, it's, it's a little slow. But it's actually not bad. Yeah, it, it's like in Tad slow-mo. So check this out. If I take the grade off, right... Okay, so if I rewind a little bit here, and we can rewatch that little bit with the grade on. Dying, yeah, see, it's a little slow mo. And we were the only two people left in our life. So, yeah, it's just a tad, tad difference. But to be honest, that is quite impressive because when I would do this exact grade on our $1,500. <laughs> Uh, custom PC, which had 64 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Uh, this was not possible, what I'm doing on this right now with this little Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, not, not possible with that kind of grade. Not, I mean, there was, you basically, I basically could not play back. So I'll turn on the grade again. Again, that's R3D raw. Okay, so now I thought it'd be interesting to see what if I change the playback to a proxy mode, right? Like a quarter resolution, right? Let's just watch it just for sake of that slow-mo hey, stuff. You're a fucking coward. Look at that. Hey, you don't think I want to come Look at that. Quarter resolution, no problems. So quarter resolution is quite a difference, but I mean, this is 6K, so maybe we can try half resolution, watch it in 3K. Yeah, that's pretty good. So if you're having lit issues, you could drop it to half resolution, which with the 6K R3D RAW is only at 3K. So, and then when you notice when we turn it off, we get a little bit of lag. Yeah. Yeah, but all things considered for what this machine is, uh, 
really quite impressive. And it definitely, I for one can testify that it is outperforming our custom PC that had a Ryzen 5 six core processor, 64 gigabytes of Vengeance RAM, a really hardcore ad rock uh, motherboard and a one terabyte NVMe SD. This same exact no tree here, I was never able to even get this kind of playback. Yeah, I stopped it right before the cuss bomb there. Pretty impressive. So this is for what I'm exporting. I'm actually exporting 4K ProRes 422 at full data level. And we can see what it's doing there with the file size. So not a whole lot. And so then we will render all. And away it goes. So yeah, we'll see how long that takes. So that file... Uh, being only a minute and 39 seconds, it did take 9 minutes and 16 seconds to export 4K uh, 422 ProRes. Okay, so I thought I would just try Premiere because I know a lot of my guys are in Premiere and I actually prefer to edit in Premiere. So this is the same clip, the same R3D Raw clip. I'm actually on a 6K timeline, so I can show you that. There you know I'm on an actual true 6K timeline. And this is at full resolution playback here. I called you and called you and you were only there for the last two months if you could even Stop call it that. You know I wanted to. Did you? Because if I'm being completely honest, I think you're... Yeah, so <laughs> it actually plays back better in Premiere. Um... A little bit of a hiccup there. I called you and called you and you were... Yeah, so you're not even getting that weird, like, slow-mo effect or nothing. But again, you know, this is just with a LUT applied. There's no grading going on here in Premiere. Uh, so I've dropped it to half resolution now. only there for the last two months if you could even Stop call it that. You know I wanted to. Did you? Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is another thing. Uh, on PC, I always avoided editing on a true 6k timeline well one because why but uh you know just for the sake of this you know it's just interesting to see like on a 6k timeline even if we wanted to do full resolution this is premiere on the little mac m1 called you and called you and you were only there for the last two months if you could even call it that yeah, so um, that's quite impressive. Uh, so it, you can imagine it's gonna be much better as soon as you drop this down to like a 4K timeline, it's going to get significantly uh, better even, but it's even at full resolution, which I never watch playback in full resolution when dealing with Premiere, um, but it can be done on this little guy. I'm really, really just blown away. All right, so now we're gonna compare export times in Premiere versus Resolve. As you'll see down here, I did, uh, it's the same amount of time, a minute and 39 seconds. Up here, it's, you know, it's the same exact export settings, Apple Pro is 422HQ. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I changed where we're exporting a 4K file, 30, 40 by 26, so it's all the same settings as what I had exporting in Resolve. So the export time is definitely uh, half the time for Resolve. But again, there's no heavy grading going on with this. I do want to point out one thing. All computers perform pretty dang well when you first get them, right? As always, I encourage you guys, if you're interested in my behind the scenes journey as a DIY independent filmmaker in Los Angeles, and maybe you are on that same career path, you're looking for some career advice, some work feedback. I have been working in the film industry for 11 years, and we talk all post-production, pre-production, work feedback, career advice, all that stuff over on the Dog Times Patreon community. Here's the link as well as down in the description below. I encourage you to check it out. So with that being said, as always, thank you for watching and I will see you next week.